All right, so we got seven minutes, let's go. So I have here a package-based monorepo using PMPM workspaces. So we define here where our packages live, which obviously here is in a packages folder where we have a product list, has its own node module, its own package JSON with all the goodies in it. And it also depends on that other local package here, which is here my awesome UI card package. Now at the top here, you see a couple of example applications, which normally in an open source type of setup of a monorepo, which is actually a very common situation, like Vue, Nux, React, all use such a monorepo setup. These are example applications where I want to test out my packages, or I might want even to deploy them alongside my docs so people can check out the live example. So how can I run commands within such a monorepo? Well, first of all, I could just CD into every package and run the, the package JSON scripts, but PMPM has a so-called recursive filter command where I can run a given script on a given path here, for instance. And so this would kind of build our two packages that live inside these, this packages folder, so product list and UI. Or I could also just target the single one. Let's say I want to run the dev script of my Remix app that lives up here. So I could just filter for a single application with application name and then run the dev script, which would then run the Remix app here. And you see here the component, the UI component being rendered. So you might ask, what is wrong with this setup? First off, nothing, right? So this works perfectly fine. And especially in such a small sample setup, it is not a problem at all. But we could definitely optimize some things here already. For instance, all of these package, packages depend on the disk, the compiled output. Because in the package JSON, they reference the files that are given here by these properties. And what happens therefore is if I delete here the disk folder, my next or remix app that imports a product list that depends on UI here would fail. So let's run for instance the remix dev command again and you can see it has issues resolving that UI package. So I would run, need to run the build again and then the dev command would run properly on my remix app. So I need to make sure I build these things in order otherwise it wouldn't work. Also if I rerun the package build again which we just did it would recompute them, even though we didn't touch anything. So there's no caching in place by default. So let's add an X on top of this. To add an X, I can just run an X at latest in it, or I could do it manually as well. This is just more handy because it will analyze first our workspace and ask us a couple of questions. So for instance, it would ask which script needs to run in order here. And we just heard about the build script that needs to run in order because it needs to build the UI first, then the product list, and then the Remix or Next app. So the build is definitely a good candidate here. Next up is what scripts are cacheable from those that NX found in all the various package JSON files. So definitely the build script is cacheable, linting probably as well, type check as well, testing, I guess, as well. And then we could specify some particular output folders, uh, but the defaults are already included, so we don't want to bother about that. So now once I have this set up, we can now leverage an X to run commands, but we can also do something cool firsthand is to understand how the structure of our workspace looks like. And I can do that by running this NX graph, which by the way, you can even do if you not have an X installed in your monorepo. So you can just run an X graph and it would pull it down and run the analysis on your workspace. But what you can see here is basically the structure of our workspace and the various dependencies. And this is exactly what an X leverages here. Because when we did set up our an X installation here just a couple seconds ago, what it did is first of all, it added a new package to the package JSON but it also added the small NX JSON configuration file, which provides metadata to NX, which includes the cacheable operations that we gave it, but it also has this build pipeline definition, which does exactly that. So basically, whenever we run a build, it uses that graph information to find all the dependent projects and builds them in order such that they resolve properly. And so that means now, for instance, I can run, for instance, the build of my products library. And what it would do immediately now is it would first run the build of the UI library. And so you can see here, if I scroll a bit up, there's a, com a comment here that it ran 
one dependent task first, and then it runs the product build. So you can see how I can focus just on building what I need to build, and the next will kind of behind the scenes build the rest of it. And obviously I can just run uh, like multiple commands globally. For instance, I could run the build and lint and testing for all the packages. And so this would now scan all the workspace packages and run the various scripts. You can see how these are also run in parallel, wherever it is possible, but you can also see that it still respects the order. So it would still run the UI first, the product first, and then run all the other commands afterwards. Now, if you pay attention, one particular thing here is that it also uses caching behind the scenes. So the, the build for the products have already been run before, so it wouldn't rerun them again, but it would rather pull them out of the cache. Now, obviously this is a small example app and it's all I can show really in seven minutes, which is kind of a hard limit that I gave myself. But if this is interesting to you and you wanna know more, especially in larger projects, definitely reach out, go to annex.dev to learn more about it or just talk to me. See you in the next one.